So I think it's fair to say that predicting the winner of a horse race can be tricky and frustrating at the best of times, especially when you consider all the freak occurrences that happen on such a regular basis. Seconditis is a disease that plagues punters on a daily basis. Now in the past I've used many statistics resources including the Racing Post, At The Races, Sporting Life and Timeform. So in this week's upload I thought I'd share my findings including but not limited to what the best resource is, which tools you need to be using and why it's better than anywhere else. By the end, I promise you'll have learned at least one or two useful things. So if you agree, please don't forget to back the like button down below, stay in the race and subscribe for future winners. Sorry, that was terrible, wasn't it? So anyway, you can improve your prediction skills by focusing on past analysis and recent information. Now, the more recent and relevant the information is, the better. Legendary punter Phil Ball realised this many years ago, back in 1948, when he first created what I now believe is the most useful statistical resource available, Timeform. Now, before you dismiss this as another results and race card website, it's really not. There's a lot more information available than you get elsewhere, but a lot of people don't realise this. You see, you get different sites like this, and they have different agendas overall. For example, the Racing Post will typically put out articles about slots being safer, or you know, FOBT being the end of the horse racing industry, they're quite clearly aligned with bookmakers. They are the bookmaker's mouthpiece, if you like. And then you've got sites like Timeform that are there for the punter that want to help you beat the bookmakers. So I guess the question on your mind at this point is, how does Timeform do this specifically? Well, I'm going to show you in three different areas. So first of all, you've got historical analysis of previous events. Secondly, you've got the measurable, um, definable angle of the rating systems that they have, because they have several different rating systems on Timeform. And then you've got the prompts, alerts, and quite frankly the shortcuts, the flags that allow you to go to the best piece of information that's most useful, highlights it for you so you don't have to do so much hard work and spend your time doing that. Mixing all three of those things together is a faster and smarter way of doing things, much like their tagline says. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to have a peruse for yourself. But first of all, let's move straight on to historical analysis and form on time form and what they have to offer. So first of all, if we look into the screen, the first few things I want to show you are race reports, replays and pace position. So we've got the race card for today coming up here. Uh, if I select the 215 at Haydock Park, gives us all of the race statistics here on screen and you can see that there's in-depth race reports for every single instance. So you've got, for example, here, if we look at, say, Red Glory, um, last run, 11th of May, Beverly, all the usual kind of stuff that you'll see on a horse's race card. But then you've got the in industry um, starting price, Betfair starting price, the high, low traded in play, um, the time form in play symbols, which we'll go through shortly in a second, and the finishing speed, time form figure, time form rating, and the adjustment there as well. So time form ratings are a slightly more complex measurement of a horse's performance historically over the past in line with how it's behaved, including lots of different variables, uh, such as things like the horse's age. So you get a slightly more advanced rating system there, which if you think to the modern world and you know things like Google, Amazon, algorithms, more information that's poured in that we can't necessarily comprehend as human beings because there's just so much of it, is all fed into this system and then gives you a time form rating. So it's a little bit more efficient than you'll get elsewhere. But the things that I really like about the um, analysis and form that's available on time form is not only the replays, but the pace position within the races. So if I go to uh, this particular race, 2.15, um, you'll see that they've got these little tabs along the top here. Now, there's, by the way, also, there's lots of different ways to find horses that you're interested in. You can even search the horse individually, find it on the day's cards coming up with the events, or even look at the results in the past there also. So, you know, you, you can find your way around easily. But if we look at this particular race, you've got these different ticks along the top. So you've obviously got prices, we've got that turned off. Um, hint tracker, I'll come on to that shortly. You may have seen that in the Dobbin video that I've done last year sometime. Tracker's very very, very useful when it comes to time saving. But if you tap the hints here, um, you've got this uh, little pace map shared on screen, which is really useful when you think about trading in play or if you're particularly looking to place a bet in play on a horse based on its running style. So um, there's a key along the bottom here, but basically the darker the color is, the more likely the uh, system that the time form have built 
predicts that the horse is likely to lead the race or be at the front of the pack. Um, obviously, the weaker the colour, less likely. So it's more of a hold up performer. You might find you'll be looking for some late finishing speed in conjunction with that. So in this example, you can see red glory here. Um, there's a black dot is the predicted uh, position and in fact little prompt has come up on the screen there saying leader or front runner so they expect that red glory will lead this race historically that's what this horse has done and it's less likely to be a hold up performer on the other end of the spectrum you've got um, say you know these, these ones are the weaker colors here secret shadow is not going to be as prominent as red glory in this instance so just to highlight that if i click red glory it takes us to red glory's form within this race and let's look at one of the historic performances let's look at the 11th of may and we'll see what happened there. Uh, you see red glory, easy to back, showed improvement, yada yada, but basically led after one furlong out. So this horse is typically a horse that performs prominently, um, is a leader, and therefore that can, you know, it can allow you to drill down, get the key information as quickly as possible, and see that and visualize that easily with so many different factors coming into the fold, which would have just took hours and quite probably you would have missed a lot of those factors if you looked at it from you know the human element so i think that's clear to see it's better than subjective information now i'm going to take a look at the ratings and symbols that are available on timeform because this is another quick way to identify a horse's behavior running style if it's temperamental if it's not temperamental and really just get a hold on if this is a reliable horse fast so the symbols i'm talking about can be found on the race cards here on screen so you'll see a couple of numbers a couple of letters might appear confusing at first really it's not we'll share the key on screen so it's a bit clearer for you but i can see here if we're talking about red glory again then you can see uh, we've got 1PR, 4S242. Now I can tell you that 1PR means that uh, the horse led was prominent, it pulled, so it was keen to race, and it was you know it was responsive and reliable when it come to um, the question time at the finish there. So you can see that you know that was quite a reliable run. You can tally that up against previous performances and see how that went. Obviously 4S is slightly different, it was towards the rear because it was slowly away. Uh, but the ones that you really want to watch out in this, there's two different types that you want to watch out for on these um, symbols, and that is the crosses and the squiggles. So if you get a single cross, it means that you know the horse was unreliable jumping. If it's a double cross, then you know it's a bit of a bad jumper. Well, you may even be looking for that depending on what you're trying to do. Because if you're trying to lay a horse in running, then you know having an unreliable horse that's a poor jumper might be a good thing for your strategy. The squiggles, um, again, they're to do with the horse's temperament. So really, what this is telling you about is the horse's style and character as a horse because as we all know some horses want to get on with it are really keen others aren't um, and, and so on and so forth so the symbols can really help you out again when it comes to narrowing but down a bit of time but the biggest thing that makes the biggest difference to me overall is the flags and um, alerts that are available on time form so you may remember the dobbin video that i done um, last year longer term followers of the channel will which you know go and check it out by all means but basically you can find horses that are half in price regularly in running and have a notification pushed to you via email on the day or the day before of the horse that's going to run now you can use that for different strategies also i just used it in the context of dobbin in that situation um, but if you're looking for a specific horse in the future then time form will email you and let you know that it's coming in advance so you don't miss it out on top of that the last couple of things that i want to mention is warning horses horses in focus and then horses for courses. So these are three different flags that appear on time form only um, based on their systems and algorithms, showing you horses that are either gonna represent poor value next time out, good value next time out, or horses you know that, uh, that are hot and horses that are not, um, and then horses that, that perform um, above average at a particular venue. So you can see a list here. This is the horses in focus, which is also represented on the pace card as this little flag here. Here, hiff so you can see this horse in particular is a horse in focus so they think that you know based on its historic performance um, in line with everything else in comparison coming up to this run it's in focus it's likely to perform above average on the other end of the spectrum you've got warning horses which are horses which you know they're a little bit temperamental something's wrong the last few times that they've run they suspect that the horse is not at its peak performance and so that is represented on the race cards um, by a little warning triangle. You can see there's a list of them daily there. And finally, the horses for courses. So, you know, much like the phrase says, some horses prefer certain courses. They 
you know routinely outperform their rivals there uh, in line with historic performances and that's represented on these race cards as this little flag here shown on screen so i think you know it's quite easy to see how these different variables can all feed into this massive machine learning type system spit out some more advanced statistics based on the additional information and data that they've got and by the way this information goes back years for, for time forms you can look up some really old performances with different horses here too um, but it's a more streamlined efficient way of doing things finding the form um, that is useful for picking the right selections when it comes to horse racing to get some of these features that i've mentioned in this video you do need the premium version of time form but in my opinion it's 100 percent worth it even just for the tracker alone so for more useful information don't forget to see the horse racing playlist that i'll leave in the end screen on this video i've answered lots of common questions that people have around horse racing grades types surfaces draw biases all manner of different things recently so there's a lot of useful stuff there thanks for watching don't forget to like this video if you found some value and subscribe to the channel for future updates